Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Welcome back to the Finite Element Methods courses online. Today we will continue with the prismatic bar and we extend it for a plain stress, plain stress trust system. As we can see, this is the our goal of this lesson. Okay, so plain trust basically is a structure con consists of bar element that lies in a common plane in a 2d plane like an xy plane itself okay and they are connected by a frictionless pin okay so we will assume all this as a frictionless pin and every bar of this is a bar element the plane truss is also must have a load acting only in a common plane okay again this load itself on the plane itself and all the loads must be applied at the nodes or join right at the nodes or join only right so it will not act along the bar or the element itself okay so this is the plane truss uh, problem so how can we solve problem involving multiple elements at uh, arbitrary arbitrary positions okay for example you may have previously we learned only to derive a bar element which consists only one direction okay now we have two axes and the bars may lie in any directions at this okay so how can we going to solve this okay so one of the way to do it is to transform it into the same coordinate system okay so that we can do the summations and the subtractions okay at the common axis right so first thing first we need to transform our vectors into into the uh, the corresponding common uh, axis or dimensions okay in many problem itself okay in a plane problem in 2d problems okay it can be it is convenient to introduce both the local as well as a global coordinate right so we may have a local okay so just assume this is the local with a prime okay as and a global coordinate okay x y right so this local coordinate is the coordinate that you use to or for your bar element itself okay the element itself okay the local coordinate is always chosen to represent the individual elements conveniently okay so you may have let's say you may have a, a simple bar right lying in this direction therefore you may choose this um, coordinate system which is the x prime and y prime okay which lies along the elements okay which you have learned how to derive the stiffness matrix okay for this particular element Okay. so global coordinates are chosen to be convenient for the whole structure okay All right so that is the, the purpose of the con global coordinates as well as the local coordinate right so now we would want to find what are the relation between them okay so this part would be very mathematical and i believe you may have learned it somewhere else in maybe calculus okay that involve uh, vectors right so for a vector's displacement let's say a d vector okay in both global as well as the local coordinate can be given as such okay so you have d equals to u i u1 i plus v1 i right so expressed in the global coordinate okay So that would be like this okay so you have u1 and v1 okay express along the global coordinates okay at the same time you may also want to express this vector d okay with the local coordinate okay so you may want to express it in local coordinate then again this vector called d can be expressed along the i prime as well as the j prime okay u prime one v prime one right so that uh, is the relation that we want to establish between them now right so 
on the unit vector itself okay unit vector itself okay so let's say you have a vector lying along the x prime directions okay as well as you have another vectors lying along the y prime directions b okay so you have a plus b would give you the i right so so you can see that a plus b vectors okay b a plus b vectors give you the i vectors okay and this i vectors let's say it is a unit vectors it consists of unit one okay therefore the unit the magnitude for a would be equals to one cos theta okay since this is a theta so a itself will be given by one cos theta whereas b magnitude would be given by one sine theta okay a is the vector a itself is in the i prime directions whereas the b vectors itself is in the j prime directions okay so mathematically okay we can again form into this okay a vectors is equals to the magnitude of a in the directions of i prime okay which is you just substitute in you get this right so same thing for the b you get this right since b is y prime is uh, going upwards okay so b which going downwards will have a minus j prime directions okay so we we'll get this particular way right so if you substitute them into this equations to define the i so called yeah i uh, unit vectors along the x directions therefore you can write that i equals to cos theta i prime minus sine theta j prime Okay, so similar way, okay, you can also do for the J itself. Okay, so let's say you have a J unit vectors, okay, therefore same methods, okay, you will get J equals to sine theta i prime plus now, okay, cos theta j prime, right? So previously it's cos minus sine, now it's sine plus cos, right? So again, go back to the original equations that we have okay to define any vectors along your your space itself okay, in, in your 2d space okay what you have derived previously okay this and this okay you can substitute it into this equation to form this particular equations now right so you have this particular equations by substituting them into it right now if you put it back okay so you have u cos theta i prime okay plus v sine theta i prime okay so therefore this i prime is equals to this i prime right so therefore u prime is equals to u cos theta plus v sine theta okay so you can write it in this form okay same thing or same way okay you can write or derive this particular form okay from this okay again we would want to express them into vectors therefore you can write it as u prime v prime equals to c s minus s c okay which is the the c is represent the cos theta the s represent the sine theta okay multiplied by the matrix u and v okay so if you just put a symbol to represent each of this basically this represent the local displacement okay along the local coordinates right and this is the global displacement okay expressed in the global coordinate and this is their relation okay between the local coordinate as well as the the global coordinate right so this is the relation between them right so this is an important uh, relationships that you would want to express okay so one based on this therefore now you can express any bar element okay along any direction that you want okay as long as finally you just combine them into a common global axis then you can do the mathematical operations like plus minus okay on it right so this is how you can see it, okay you, you see that uh, u okay along the i uh, axis okay plus this is the v right so v1 okay along the j axis okay so along the j axis so if you put them in together therefore this 
line plus this line will give you what you you intend to get right so you get the u prime okay u prime right so u cos theta which give you this black line okay and v sine theta which give you this dotted line okay sum them up you get the v prime okay so mathematically and graphically they are same all right so now go to this uh, simple examples to illustrate uh, the relation between them okay so in this example what you need to do is to find out what is the the local displacement okay at not two okay given that the not two now is undergoing a global displacement okay global displacement u2 equals to 0 0.1 v2 equals to 0 0.2 okay so i have a graphically plot it out or draw it out right so the u2 and v2 okay u2 and v2 at not two right so what happened is that uh, you would expect now that this point not two will extend to this particular positions okay going through this right but now what would be the distance okay in the local coordinate our local coordinate will be in the x prime directions right okay so what you can do okay if you are using the previous equations okay previous equations okay u prime equals to u sine theta plus v sine theta okay therefore substitute them right so you get your answer which is 0 0.223 okay but based on your mathematical knowledge okay since this is 90 degree okay very very clear 90 degree therefore you can easily solve this using pythagoras as well okay just to double check your answer right so you can use the use two square okay plus v two square right so it should give you the changes okay which is represented by this length right this length is the hypotenuse right so hypotenuse okay so your d square so therefore you would try this okay you would eventually found that this d would be equals to this right so that would be mathematically proof that they are equals right so this 0 0.223 represent this particular length okay in the local coordinates this bar itself will extend 0 0.223 inch okay whereas in the global coordinate itself it will be extending in the x direction 0 0.1 inch in the y directions 0 0.2 inch okay that is the meaning behind it right now uh, if we would want to extend it okay so called extend it okay for stiffness matrix okay previously we only take care about the displacement right using the same concept now you can actually uh, easily extend it okay to the global stiffness matrix okay you would want to express the stiffness matrix of every single element that you have and do some operation for them right okay so what we will need to do is based on the local coordinate right so this is the equation that you you have okay previously remember we only have derived okay for a bar okay we assume there is a tension okay then we would say this is u1 then this is f1 okay this is a uh, v1 or u u2 all right so this is u2 then this is f2 okay let's say okay then this would be the length right so imagine now this is slanted okay and this is represented by this okay so what you need to do is you just express or assume all these things are in the local coordinate right therefore in the local coordinate they just put a notation by prime 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 right so basically this is the coordinate that uh, this is the bar element that you uh, used to derive in the previous uh, previous week okay so now if you would want to express this into a bigger or maybe uh, a common global uh, coordinate what you need to do is that since we know that 
in the global coordinate there is an x component as well as y component what we can do is that every single of this local coordinate or component itself we can break them into two okay you may have f1x f1y okay same thing for this you may have break them two into two f1 f2 x f2y same thing for this u1 prime okay the displacement itself okay displacement or for this okay so now it become prime right so it can be expressed into the global coordinate which consists of u1 v1 same thing for this okay u2 v2 for the knot number two okay the rest the equations remain the same right so this is a stiffness matrix for your bar element right so mathematically or um, in the matrix form it still remain unchanged okay only the elements in the matrix now slowly change right so since we know that every of this can be break, break broken up into uh, can be divided into two and two so for a global coordinate now we would have four equals to k and four right so it's still the very similar right two components in the local coordinate now become four components in the global coordinate okay all right so how would we how we would want to transform this relationship is that now uh from the local coordinate okay from the local coordinate we have a relationship with the global coordinate right and the relationship would be c s and i think it's yeah c s uh, c s and then cos and sine right cos and sine okay so you will have this uh, relationship in matrix form okay so therefore this trans we would call this as a transformation matrix okay c represent the cos theta s represent the sine theta zero 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 c and s okay this is the relationship between the local coordinates or local displacement with respect to the global uh, displacement right so you can see that u1 u2 okay is related to these two okay by the cos and sine okay relationship okay exactly the same equation that you have previously okay just double check okay so this is the previous equation that you have okay only for two different coordinates okay coordinate number a for different nodes okay not number one and not number two okay not number one not number two right so once we have this relationship okay so same thing for the force okay even force we can uh, resolve it into the component okay by the same methods okay by doing the transformations okay therefore we have this same relationship right so now once we have all this relationship okay what we can do is that we can say that f equals to kd right so if everything is in the in the local coordinate okay so how can we uh, relate or transform them into a global coordinate is by you already have this relationship okay substitute in okay we also have the relationship derived for the local displacement previously in the previous slide right so substitute in okay so eventually we have this particular equations right so use these equations you can further them right so how we could uh, further from there onwards okay now you can see that we have this particular uh, equations okay if we involve v as well okay if we would want to involve v as well previous equations these equations and these equations only involve u right u1 okay only involve u right but if let's say your bar element okay also involve v okay which uh, when we derive is this not the case right okay but make it general okay so if it also involve a displacement in the v direction therefore we would have this relationship okay minus s and c okay given as such okay so in a in a square matrix form you will have this four by four matrix transformation matrix okay so this is for a general uh yeah, general 
elements okay but for a bar element okay this would be sufficient for a bar element right since at our derivations previously we will only assume displacement along the x prime uh, directions right but for global for simplifications or generalizations of all the equations we will use this particular four by four matrix right so same thing if we would express for the force in the in the yeah in the square matrix we will also have this particular matrix okay so you can now easily solve them using matrix right so you can have f equals to previously have t over here right okay so move it over it become inverse transformation matrix right inverse it right but then for orthogonal matrix okay which is this one is an orthogonal matrix okay therefore this inverse basically is just a transpose of the matrix okay so you can just google it okay to to see what is the difference and when they can equals to each other okay for an inverse as well as a transpose matrix right so once you you get all this relationship basically eventually the stiffness matrix okay the global stiffness matrix okay would be defined by this particular equations or matrix okay this symmetry means you just have to repeat all the components okay this component repeat over here okay this component repeat over here right this component repeat over here symmetry right along this uh, diagonal right so you can just write this symmetry okay this represent the operations itself okay now come to the next part okay which uh, previously after we have uh, formed our stiffness matrix then we would want to solve them right so, okay so basically you just have to solve them by uh, total them up sum them up okay or superimpose of or the the stiffness matrix as well as the nodal uh, nodal forces okay for every single element by the previous relationship okay but you have uh, that we have gone through since maybe chapter 2 right okay so that would uh, give you an idea of how you can uh, apply what you have learned or derive for a bar elements okay and solve them uh, using the the common global coordinate system okay so here is a, an examples of a bar element which is lying not along the the global axis okay so this is slightly slanted okay so they are given this uh modulus the length okay the cross-sectional area the a right okay so the angle is also given 30 okay so how we can solve them what we can do is since our equations okay to derive for the the stiffness matrix itself is given by this right so a we already know okay e we already know l is already given as well right so what we need is just to compute what is c what is s okay so that's why to to facilitate okay you just compute what is c what is s okay the value is this and then you fill it up okay for your matrices okay you then eventually will get your stiffness matrix as given right same thing if you would want to uh, extend it okay to compute for the stress okay for a bar in any two-dimensional plane okay for xy plane itself okay basically the the stress is equals to the force divided by the cross-sectional area right okay and from our equation itself okay you will consider this ae over l all right so if you just bring this a over here okay over the force area okay force uh side okay therefore you you just have e over l all right whereas the rest would be uh, depending on what parameter you are looking for okay so here if let's say we only concentrate on the on the force acting at not two okay since you know that 
for a single bar itself okay force acting at not two should be equals to force acting at not one as well right since they are in equilibrium okay so you just take one of it okay here we just take a uh, force number force two okay therefore eventually the equations of the stress will be given by e over l minus one one d prime right so once you have these equations again this d prime itself you have the relationships okay given by the stiffness met eh, transformation matrix right okay you just apply since this is only two by two so you just use the two by two uh two sorry two by four uh matrix okay to solve them all right so if you are still not clear when to use two or one or four you just use the the general uh, four by four equations okay eventually you you can cancel out all right and you will reduce it to the similar uh, matrix all right okay so here again uh, we will go through uh, simple examples okay to illustrate uh, that particular calculations right so this examples okay we just extend it slightly all right where the cross-sectional area is given the young modulus is given the length is given okay then the angle is also given 60 degree right then now what is uh being defined okay is the global displacement okay you have a global displacement being defined as such okay so there is uh, some changes okay and what you need to to get is the axial stress okay meaning to say the stress along the the element itself okay along the axis x prime uh, itself okay so now what is important before you start to do anything okay is the consistency of the unit right again this uh, has been stressed during your assignments with your first assignments as well as the FEA right so all the calculations behind the computer itself they apply the same coordinate or sorry the unit system okay so make sure they are consistent okay so if this is in meter gigapascal meter then this displacement in mm should be also updated okay accordingly right according to your systems of coordinate that you would want to choose okay if you choose meter then everything should be in meter as well including the displacement okay for the for the young modulus if you refer to the table you may want to use pascal okay so in the computer they they will accept pascal form right but human can always use whatever uh, units they want okay as long as finally they can cross check all the the units so that they are consistent throughout your calculations right so here uh, they will use a mega eh, sorry the kilo pascal okay the rest is in meter okay so meaning to say eventually what you get at the end okay since we are using kilo pascal here what you get at the end for the stress would be in the unit of kilo pascal as well okay Pascal is Newton per meter square okay so what you need now is just use the equations okay put it in right accordingly then solve okay since uh, the displacement global displacement is given okay convert them into meters right then eventually you should get your answer in kilo Newton per meter square or kilo Pascal okay so this kilopascal will be represented by megapascal okay so human can do this interpretations of a uh, units consistence okay because uh, the consistency of the units being used throughout the the calculations okay but in the computer itself they don't have all this unit therefore that's why when you use it okay they must be consistent okay they must be in the meter kilogram newton second pascal unit okay when you express them so that what you get later on is meaningful for you okay otherwise uh you have to interpret it okay if you again if you don't want to use kilopascal here okay then eventually when somehow they calculate okay you must know that that it would be in the kilopascal right okay 
so same thing for this uh, particular plane truss okay so once we have a so able to solve for one particular uh, bar element okay therefore now we can go back okay we look back on the original problem the plane truss problem okay that you have been presented on the very first few slide okay you see these figures consist of three bar elements okay with a force acting at not one all right so what you would do okay i will just go through uh, the concept behind it all right the detailed calculation you can uh, look at it carefully later on okay based on the slide right so the concept would be determine all of this stiffness matrix displacement as well as forces acting on it okay so you have not one two three and four into a common or yeah a global coordinate system x y right so what you need again you just need this stiffness matrix uh, equations which consists of c c s c and so on right so since everything is in cos and sine this would be best that you form this kind of table okay on the cos sine then cos square sine square and then cos sine okay cos sine so you just fill it up okay for here you have uh, always calculate from here is zero degree okay go up is uh, until 90 degree right okay based on the normal conventions of the trigonometric rays so here the element number one would be 90 degree element number 245 element number three is zero degree right so you will have this particular uh, uh, equations or oh, sorry the the notations okay given so now you have the c s c s s and so on fill it up accordingly okay so once you have done that okay what you need to do is based on that fill it into this stiffness matrix for every single element so for element number one it's connecting not one and two therefore you will put u1 v1 u2 v2 for element number two it involves not two and not three therefore you put u1 v1 v u3 v3 and so on okay so once you have formed this particular stiffness uh matrix okay again do the direct stiffness matrix methods okay combine them into like u1 v1 u2 v2 u3 v3 u4 v4 right so combine them together using the direct stiffness matrix okay once you have formed this okay then the rest would be quite easy for you right so you, you just fill in all the boundary conditions accordingly okay whatever you know zero and one and uh, ten thousands over here okay the rest you fill it up then eventually you would get your answer okay so now since this may involve more than how many one two four six eight eight equations right then you may start to think or oh, is it too difficult to to solve all these uh, simultaneous equations okay this is why you would want to express them in the matrix form okay such that you can ask computer or use computer to to solve it for you okay how computer can solve this okay you have learned numeric methods before okay to solve similar equations or you can use yeah you have been exposed to scilab okay matlab as well right so inside they can express it in in the matrix form and you can solve them using the operations within the software itself okay so that is would be how you can solve them using computers right so this is how you can do it okay manually okay to get all the stresses okay so you you divide by the proper uh, area okay for every single bar itself to get the answer okay so to verify again you may want to try to sum all the forces acting along the x direction as well as the y directions and you know that since the truss or the plane truss itself is in static equilibrium therefore the summations of forces in both directions should be equals to zero right so if you total them up it should give you zero okay total them up it should give you zero okay
so that would be how you can solve it okay by the direct stiffness met, uh, method okay next would be uh, the use of the symmetry uh, in uh, structures okay so very uh, common that uh, we can see uh, many structure itself when we design they are uh, symmetrical okay they have a like a mirror okay that we we call it as a refractive uh, symmetry okay maybe in the form of size shapes positions of load and other things okay therefore uh, the use of symmetry will actually allows us to reduce the problem okay so that you can act, do the calculation much more faster okay you can see that in the previous examples only three bar okay only three bar itself okay but then your equations would have eight equations to solve okay so just imagine if you have more elements okay then uh, it will increase the computational time okay therefore if you can find out a symmetry line okay meaning to say you have re you may able to reduce at least uh, uh, around half numbers of the elements in wolf all right so here is an examples of a symmetrical problem okay you have a not one not five okay then not a, a, a load acting or not number four okay therefore you may found that there is a symmetrical uh, uh, line ac across this okay so if you want to replace it into symmetrical uh, uh, problem okay that would be a uh, great okay so immediately you will reduce to one two three four five only five bar in wolf okay instead of six seven eight okay instead of eight elements in wolf now you have reduced it to five okay you save three okay if you have millions of elements then you can save uh, a lot really a lot of it okay so in this problem itself okay you can see that uh there are four four things okay that you may need to take care of right so first thing is the reflective symmetry when we say is reflective symmetry it is symmetrical in terms on geometrical okay as well as material load as well as boundary conditions okay this boundary conditions also must be symmetrical okay if let's say there is no uh, boundary condition over here then we cannot say this is symmetrical problem all right okay then if if now uh, So if now this is correct okay then therefore uh, the next would be we slowly divide even the loads okay initially there is 2p acting on this okay as long as it is on the symmetrical line we have to divide it by half okay so the force acting now would be p is of 2p okay then on the uh, cross-sectional area okay for the elements involved in the symmetrical plane okay this four element four and five their cross-sectional area will be reduced by half okay then for the nodes uh, where the displacement of the component are normal okay this constraint itself okay for this particular constraint on the symmetrical line okay we have to assign a displacement okay we have to constrain the displacement such that this displacement will not penetrate through okay the symmetry plane right so we need to say the displacement in this directions okay normal to the plane of symmetry must be equals to zero therefore that's why we put a roller okay which is to constrain the movement in the uh, x directions okay in this case right so once we have formed this the rest is uh, exactly the same solutions like previous you just have to form the 
the tables, okay, form the matrices, okay, then solve them simultaneously, alright. Other cases would be involving the incline or skewed support, okay, so this would be we call it as a scale or incline support, okay. If in general we can easily constrain in the y directions or in x directions okay so in this particular conditions it is not along x or y okay so what we need to do is when we do okay as usual okay so formula formulations of the trust systems the shifters matrix is still the same what happen is only occurs at the the boundary conditions okay so to handle the the skill boundary conditions we have to assign specifically that the displacement in along the this particular y directions okay local coordinate displacement must be equals to zero okay we have to specifically uh, specify this okay so if you want to retransform you can transform it back into to x or y coordinate okay so that's why it would be easier to remain the oh yeah keep the so-called local coordinate uh, for this particular purpose okay you can solve it okay so that you you be able to find what is the displacement along the the x prime directions easily okay so that would be beneficial for you when you deal with the the scale or the inclined type of support all right mathematically right so in the software yes for sure the software will do or take care of all this uh problem for you okay as long as you have defined the boundary conditions in the software correctly right so you have to define them correctly okay so last part would be the comparisons of the finite element solutions to the exact solutions of a uh, bar element okay as we know that uh, from the strength of material knowledge uh, we, we can actually find the displacement okay uh, for a bar okay let's say in this problem you have a bar okay cantilever bar okay fixed to a wall right so you have a so-called uh this yeah disputed load okay o occurs okay on it right due to the maybe the weight or whatever it is okay so by the solution itself okay uh, exact solutions or the yeah theoretical solutions you will get this particular uh, final displacement okay given by in the in the order of a uh, cube right x cube okay you may want to yeah in the in the form in the form of x cube okay but then in the final elements method itself okay what you would see is that uh, the the solutions for the displacement match would be exact at the knot point right so if we use only one element okay you can see that the exact solution is the curve line right there is a curve a smooth curve line there the, the exact solution but then if you are using only one one element bar okay therefore only the two knot point would be correct okay there is be there will be a, a lot of error in between the the bar itself okay if you intend to use two elements okay then the add two elements will be half and half right so this not would be a, would be correct okay in terms of the displacement okay in terms of the displacement right so same thing for the four elements and so on so from here okay you can see that the solutions will match for the displacement at the knot okay and yeah this is actually due to the the calculations of the energy equivalent right so now next would be the values at the locations in between in between two nodes now in between these two nodes like for example here now that would be the the poorest okay because what we did actually is we use a linear displacement function okay remember in a bar we assume a linear displacement functions for them okay therefore the displacement 
across the 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 two node itself would be a straight line okay we will approximate using a straight line okay that's why it would be poor on that particular sense okay whereas the solutions remember we say uh, the exact solution is uh, in, in the power of three uh, cubic functions okay so yeah so if we would want to uh, improve the solutions okay we can in increase the number of elements okay where as we increase then the it will ap approximate better okay then for the stress derived from the slope okay what we can see is that uh, the u is the linear functions okay and the axial stress is constant for every single element okay we assume theoretically the young modulus doesn't change the 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 cross sectional area is a constant and so on so forth okay therefore it will take uh, more elements to actually model the so called uh, axial stress across it okay so in general if we look at the one element uh, solutions okay so the stress across the bar itself will be a constant okay dotted line okay which is equals to 3 uh, 1000 psi okay it's so only one one particular bar okay represented by by this particular bar okay but then for a two elements so we will have one stress for this and we have another stress for this particular element that would be given by the round shape okay so this would be the the yeah, the solutions okay so this is the the stress for the first bar for the first element and this would be the the stress for the second element okay shown here okay so this first element okay second element right so it's given by this okay first element second element right so as we slowly increase the number of element you can see that we can break them further right and that would approximate much more closer to the exact solutions okay across this uh, particular uh, yeah this exact solutions it will match much closer right so as you can see now okay what happened is that the best approximations for stress okay for a stress is not on the not now okay it's actually occurs at the midpoint of the elements okay midpoint of the element you can see that uh, for this particular exact solutions right so if you use the midpoint okay which is this particular point it will be quite close right for this two bar as well two bar okay the midpoint is here the midpoint is here okay for the element it match the exact solutions right for the four bar okay four bar for this element the midpoint is here okay it match exactly here this one as well this one as well okay and as well as the other ones okay so the best approximation for a stress would occurs not on the node but at the midpoint of the element okay that is would be the observations that we can conclude right so finally the stress is not continuous across the element board boundaries okay when there is a discontinuity between the the boundaries okay the stress itself will actually uh yeah discontinue right jump from one point to the others right so here is the the yeah you can see that they are not continuous okay for eight eight elements solutions two element solutions as well okay so the only way to reduce this discontinuity okay so that they they form a very smooth line okay, okay or stress uh, changes across the the whole whole structure itself would be by increasing the number of elements so you can see that as the number of element increase the the stress okay the axial stress will actually uh, converge to the yeah nearer to the exact solutions okay so that concludes uh, this chapter okay on the prismatic bar elements Okay, so if you have uh, questions, you can always uh, feel free to ask in the WhatsApp group or maybe in the Google Classroom as well. Okay, we after this slide, okay, yeah, 
if you look at the slide okay after the the slide okay of this okay you can see another examples okay of uh of the trust system okay that you can go through it on your own as well all right so that's all from me for this week okay so do check with the google classroom and yeah we'll see you again next monday right see you and take care bye bye